Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome on into the Rooted Podcast. Tim Strombo coming to you from our Rooted Production Studios out here in beautiful Denver, Colorado. Thanks again, by the way, for being with us, be it on iTunes, SoundCloud, or the host website, stayrooted.com. We're, of course, thrilled to have you with us and a very happy new year to you. It's not the new year yet on the time that we're recording this show, but by the time you hear it, it'll be the new year. So happy new year. We hope you had a great time We are pumped for this next year of podcast uh, and producing more and more TV episodes for Rooted TV, which of course airs through our awesome partners over at Cannabis Club TV. Be sure to check them out if you haven't already. Also, be sure to check out our full episodes of these interviews. We do full podcast video episodes as well. You can find those on our YouTube channel or our website. If you just hit the podcast on the website, we'll embed the video on there for you to make it really easy to find. Uh, I've been teasing a couple of things and a couple of new announcements on the show lately, and one that I can share with you now officially is that we're going to be hitting the road a bunch in 2019. That's right. We'll be leaving the comfort and warmth of our production studio to hit the road to interview people all over the country. Uh, We'll have a ton of video on location as well as some live broadcasts through our YouTube or Facebook platform. So subscribe to our content, our newsletter through the website if you want to, or follow our social And that'll keep you up to date on everything we're doing so you don't miss any of our shows. Now, as for this show, this show, we've got a very fun one on you uh, on the show for you today, as we'll be talking to a gentleman by the name of Rob Smith, inventor and co-founder of Atlas Plant Trainer, a product designed to help small home growers maximize all outputs and get bigger yields. Now, Rob is a longtime proponent of the cannabis plant, a longtime consumer of cannabis, and he's been growing medical cannabis for years and years. So we'll talk about a lot of things like inventing a product for the cannabis space. What exactly is the problem that his product is trying to solve? And what sort of issues does the average home grower face? Have you been thinking about growing for yourself? A lot of people are complaining about prices and these new legal and recreational Uh, excuse me, medical and recreational markets that have gone legal in the last year or so. And I've always said it's like home brewing. If you want to grow these plants for yourself, you know, you can produce at a lower cost and you can buy it arguably, you know, once you get set up. So if you've ever thought about growing cannabis for yourself at home, this is going to be a great episode for you. We'll learn a lot about that as well. We'll welcome in Rob in just a second. Before we do, I want to let you know this podcast being brought to you by our awesome partners over at Green Bros, home of the world's premier dry harvesting solutions. And if you haven't heard yet, Green Bros just announced a new partnership with Purogen Botanics uh, to bring you the box. Now, this thing is absolutely amazing. You have to see it. Go over to greenbros.com and check it out. This thing was originally developed for tissue stick sterilization for surgical implications for actual surgery and generating uh, not generating but sterilizing tissue Uh, the boxes remediation technology can eliminate mold or other microbial organisms in your harvest it can also rehydrate your flower if it's become too dry or even infuse terpenes into your flower allowing you and your grow to create a -a one-of-a-kind flavor profile that is truly unique to your company All using of reactive oxygen technology, meaning no harmful microwaves, no radiation that can drastically harm your flower. Again, you need to see it to believe it. Hit them up, 844-379-8746 or info at greenbros.com for more information. All right, let's jump on into the show. Rob, welcome on in, man. How are you this afternoon? Thanks for joining us, buddy. Thanks so much for having me, Tim. Um, I'm doing excellent today. Thanks. Awesome, man. I'm pumped on this uh, on this show that we're going to have here because I've been someone who's wanted to learn a couple of the things we're going to talk about. Really haven't had the chance because, uh, you know, for the most part of the 70 plus episodes we have uh, recorded so far, we've really focused a lot on the ancillary companies uh, and people who provide a lot more of like the services for the industry. Really haven't talked much about home growing or home growing products. So this will be really interesting. And uh, you're what I'd like to call a cannabis lifer, someone who's been around the plant for decades, knows about the growing process, and operates in the industry. So how long have you been growing, and at what scale have you been growing? 
So I started growing um, over four years ago as a main medical marijuana patient um, and quickly realized after growing my six plants that I had kind of a green thumb um, and that people were really enjoying the cannabis that I was producing. So uh, we looked into what it would take to um, expand our operation and become a caregiver. And in Maine, you're allowed to be a caregiver for five patients per person and um, six plants per each patient. So you can grow 30 plants um, underneath one household plus your own six as a medical patient. So we were allowed to grow 36 plants um, for myself and then we added on my wife as a caregiver. Um, so at any one time we had between 40 and 60 flowering plants um, when our operation was in full swing. So that equaled out to about 20,000 watts underneath one roof, all the veg plants, um, the mothers that went along with that. Um, and we did that full blown operation for just under three years before we recently sold the house and the grow um, to move and focus on the um, other businesses that we have going on. So how does that work? What do you, you apply for the license just for yourself and under that included in that like personal grow license, you can supply and grow for uh, other medical patients. And then do they have to like sign up with you? How does that process work? Yeah, essentially, you um, recruit patients, so to speak, um, and then you register with the state per the amount of patients that you have. Um, so it costs um, $240 to register with the state for a year to grow for that patient. Um, but they signed up with you, um, but the state didn't necessarily know the um, patient's name. So you kept your patient's paperwork, and if they wanted to leave and you wanted to recruit another patient, um, the state didn't need to know about that switch. So it was a very um, low-key um, system, and recently the laws just changed up in Maine, so it's even less uh, patient tracking, um, and uh, each caregiver can grow up to 30 plants and not have to register for different patients. So it's uh, even opened up a little bit more than it had been. Very interesting. Now, uh, for those who don't know, Rob's out in Maine. Uh, there's really two coasts when you talk about cannabis. I mean, most <laughs> people, you know, the West Coast is by far, I'd say, the advanced coast with the East Coast catching up. Uh, on the legal side, you know, both markets, I'm sure, go back years and years and decades and decades. Uh, but you're someone, I'm sure, who's followed the evolution and the trend of the industry, you know, ever since you started growing and before that. Uh, what's it, it like, you know, the cannabis culture out there up in the Northeast? And I mean, you have, you know, some some states who are going to the wreck and are, you know, instituting medical programs. So it has to be coming along compared to, you know, a handful of years ago, right? It's finally catching up. I mean, you're in Colorado and you have the most mature market, um, legal market anyways, with California an arguable uh, ma maturity level um, on the market side. Um, and Massachusetts, uh, where we are now, just opened up their um, first legal rec stores just a couple weeks ago. Um, so the the markets themselves have really blossomed in the last year or so um, where there are actual brands and people trying to make it make a name for themselves um, in the legal cannabis space outside of a dispensary or a, a small time grow um, there are people that are putting their uh, logos and names and and colors and and actually um, you know trying to make a brand recognition um, last in the state of New England. So it's really cool to see that side of the market catch up with um, where the rest of the legal um, country is. I want to talk more about the Massachusetts market in just a minute. But before we do, I want to get back into the home growing subject a bit more. Uh, as before you started Atlas Plant Trainer, by the way, you can check them out, atlasplanttrainer.com. I'll link that in the description of the podcast below so you have no trouble finding it. Uh, but before you did that, your first actual venture into cannabis entrepreneurship uh, was starting a trimming rental, trimming machine rental company. Tell me about that and why you did that. Yes. Yeah, so um, as um, sole proprietors of our business, um, and we had lots of um, cannabis to trim for our patients, um, we found ourselves on the couch many nights, um, as lots of other home growers do, um, trying to trim up uh, the cannabis from our last harvest. 
And after the third night in a row of sitting on the couch till midnight, one o'clock in the morning, my wife turned to me and said, we're getting a trimming machine. <laughs> uh, and from being a longtime cannabis consumer and grower, um, I was very um, adamantly against that because um, I wanted to hand trim all of our fine flowers. Um, this time, she caught me at a weak moment, and I gave in. And a <laughs> week the later, we on the third night of trimming. On That's the third night of yeah, and we have a three-year-old, so she doesn't sleep in. She's up at six o'clock in the morning. So, um, the third night, we agreed to get a trimming machine, and a week later, it was there. And I love the job that it did um, for us. Um, so we um, decided to make a business out of that um, because. Uh, we had a $10,000 trimming machine sitting in our garage that we would only use for one day a month. Um, so we started renting it out, and it really took off. Um, so we started going to trade shows, um, and now um, we uh, do rentals and sales all across New England um, and do a little bit of service for all sorts of trimming machines. And we have a really handy guy um, that does our service, so we kind of branched out into that as well. Um, but uh, we're really finding a niche with doing um, demos as we're getting into the legal market. Um, so we have a bunch of machines that we can show up, do some demonstrations with, and, and let the customer decide which is the machine for them. Now, you mentioned trimming machines. I mean, I would be remiss uh, to our sponsor. They'd be mad at me if I didn't bring up Green Bros. Did you get a chance to try a Green Bros trimming machine out there on the East Coast? Yeah, we've actually um, worked with Green Bros before. Um, the they do an ama their trim machine does an amazing job. We used to rent out the 215. Um, we haven't replaced that machine yet. Um, the East Coast growers um, don't particularly like to allow their product to get as dry as the Green Bros machine needs it to be in order for that machine to work really well. Um, the West Coast growers don't have a problem with that. Um, and uh, we just can't seem to win over the East Coast growers. And uh, Lisa, that works at Green Bros, told us that as soon as we started um, working with them. They, uh, that she's always struggled to get East Coast growers to allow their product to dry that, that much. Um, but when you do, um, their machines are really uh, top-notch trim quality. You know, it's so interesting you mentioned that because I have heard stuff like that before. And it's so crazy that, you know, different areas like to trim a different amount, like up in the Pacific Northwest, they like to leave it more leafy from what I hear. California is more of like a military cut where it's everything's off. And it's just crazy how every different market wants a different trim. Uh, you know, you have the different humidities and environments in every market, which affects how plants are processed. So it really is an interesting plant just on that level. Um could you tell me uh, what problem were you trying to solve? Getting back to Atlas Plant Trainer. Uh, so you're running the trimming company. Eventually you say, okay, I have an idea for this product and I think it's going to do some great things. Tell me about that. Sure. So um, any home grower is limited by the number of plants that they can grow and typically um, by the height of the space that they can grow in. Um, so we, we too were limited by the, the height of the space that we could grow in. Um, so I, I knew from the very beginning that um, plant training was the only way to ensure that we were going to get bigger yields off of um, our limited plant counts. Um, so I started imploring all the techniques that every grower normally does and found that none of them worked. Bamboo stakes, tomato cages, wire ties, trellis netting, all of that stuff. Um, and I started drawing up some sketches to see what might, um, you know, grow with the plant and be a little more customizable than a straight bamboo stake. I showed it to a couple friends of mine that were growers and um, they told me that I had a great idea and I should pursue it. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm unlike anybody else. I think we've all had those like aha moments where we've had like that idea and we've never done anything with it. And then three years later, we see that out on the shelves at a supermarket. Um, and I didn't want that to be this time. Um, so one night I was um, uh, stretching in my living room and um, talking with my wife and she grabbed her computer and filled out a form and said, there, 
tomorrow you're going to be contacted by a product designer and you need to tell them everything that you want to do with Atlas Plant Trainer. It wasn't called Atlas Plant Trainer at that time, um, but um, the rest, as they say, is history. Um, we met with him a, two, a few weeks later and um, had drawings and it was pretty much exactly what we wanted. Um, so the, the, the straw that broke the camel's back, um, the story that I like to tell is I had a sour cush strain that was uh, two and a half feet tall when um, I put it into the flower room. And um, it was almost seven and a half feet tall when it was done stretching. Um, so within that three weeks time, it tripled in height. Um, and I didn't have any stakes or anything around that was, um, almost eight feet tall. So I had to go buy more supplies, cut them down, yada, yada, yada. Um, and eventually it led to like 50 bamboo stakes in my 10 gallon pot. Um, and I just really didn't like the idea of having to have more and more products that, um, I wasn't really going to use anymore. Um, so that was kind of the, the decision that was like, we, we have to move this forward. So, um, let's keep making those steps and, um, bringing this product to market. So on top of starting Atlas plant trainer, uh, and working on that side, you're also trying to spread education around the entire process, something that we're going to talk about throughout this. Uh, but you have a podcast, a journal app and things like that. Why is the educational side of this so important to this project? So I, I think, I think there's so many people that are looking to grow their own medicine for a multitude of reasons. You touched upon one of them, the cost of legal, whether it's medicinal or recreational cannabis, um, has come down in uh, mature markets, but you still have the taxes to contend with. So the, the legal cost is only going to get so low. Like in California, it's a 40% tax right now. So even at $100 ounces, those are $140 ounces. And any grower um, growing their own at home can easily beat that price um, by having a little education and spending a little time with their cannabis plants. So the, the concept behind the education is um, there's so many people that don't know what they're doing. And our philosophy is keeping it really simple for the home grower, um, which there's a lot of products like Atlas Plant Trainer that make it simple to grow, simple to keep getting better, and eventually get more yields out of their plants. Um, so we like partnering with those types of products to make it easier, make that education um, easier and more understandable for the new grower, um, because there's a lot of natural intimidation to taking on anything new. Um, and we just want to, you know, make it so that people don't get scared when they make a mistake because um, they're, they're easy to overcome and we just want to help people do that. And you brought up something interesting. I'd like to talk about uh, the California tax being, you know, around 40%. Massachusetts, if I'm not mistaken, is around 20%. Uh, and they've made millions in the first couple of weeks through just a couple of dispensaries, which means, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars being collected in tax. Uh, and it's interesting. I actually, I mean, I looked, I looked up the tobacco tax in Massachusetts uh, or the story that I read had the tobacco tax in it. Uh, and it, that's 40%. So just to put that into perspective for people at home, I know tobacco and cannabis are different, but they're also, you know, there are a couple of adult use products. Uh, so comparatively, you know, 20% to 40% is not that bad, is what I'm saying. Uh, but what are your thoughts on how Massachusetts has approached the idea of, of taxing this and, and where that money is kind of going, you know? Well, initially, I think that their proposed tax rate when we passed the law was even lower than that 20 percent. Um, I don't remember the exact number, but I think it was between nine and 12 percent. Um, I remember listening to an interview with um, the person that was pushing the campaign forward, and um, they asked him what the uh, tax revenue money should go towards. Um, and he responded with uh, he didn't think that there would be much more uh tax revenue than what it would take to run the program. Um, so when they implemented the law, they raised the um, tax rate, which I think is a good idea. Um, I, I think there's, I, I think 20, 25% is a, is a decent amount. Um, and and I think I think Massachusetts, from, from what I know of the other states, is trying to do it right. Um, they are definitely taking it very slowly, um, but they are 
are only doing that because they want to implement the program the right way. Um, there are some flaws, just like in any other new program. Um, but I, I really think that the um, Cannabis Control Commission is putting their best foot forward and, and trying to do the right things. Real quick again, I want to let you all know this podcast brought to you by our good buddies over at Green Bros, home of the world's premier dry harvesting solutions. From small-scale cultivations all the way up to commercial grows, Green Bros dry trimmers, trichome ex- extractors, destemmers. They just launched a lot of machines in 2018, a sorting machine, a precision batcher, the remediation technology with the box. They also partnered with Pure Pressure LLC, a company just down the road from us in Colorado that makes arguably the best rosin presses in all of the industry and they've just announced that two more dry trimmers are coming out here in 2019 all with surgical stainless steel and one of them is going to be a smart trimmer that will allow you to track progress send reports put in special batch uh, uh, instructions stuff like that so this company is really moving forward hit them up greenbros.com 844-DRY-TRIM that's 844-379-8746 or info at greenbros.com to get free demos or to talk more about all the products that these guys offer. We're talking with Rob Smith, the inventor and co-founder at Atlas Plant Trainer. You can check them out, atlasplanttrainer.com. They're maximizing all inputs and getting bigger yields for your home grows. Now, is this just home grows or are you seeing people in uh, more of a commercial space use some of this as well? So we've started to leak into commercial spaces um, for uh, mother maintenance. So we're all about growing wider, not taller plants. Um, And commercial cultivators are definitely seeing the benefit um, with growing mothers wider, um, getting even light penetration across the entire plant, and then being able to top off um, all of the tops, take cuttings from the entire plant and not just the bushy outside of it. Um, The other aspect, so... Um, Alice Plant Drainer was designed to maximize yields off of an in- individual plant. Um, and commercial cultivators are not typically uh, limited to uh, the number of plants that they can grow. Um, Colorado's lowest limitation for a number of plants is 7,000. Um, so that's not really a limitation on a plant. Um, New Mexico is the only state um, and we're working with a couple of cultivators to get some test units out there. Um, but we'd love some more if anybody's listening. Um, but their limitations are uh, 200 plants to 450 flowering plants at any one time. So that's where we think um, Alice Planter Inner can really have an impact on a commercial cultivator um, with their truly limited plant counts. Now, jumping back into our conversation about taxes and the price of cannabis and stuff like that, I've always said to people that have complained about systems or complained about the price, you should just go grow for yourself. But how easy is it really? I mean, I come from a home grow uh, family. My dad grew in home for years and years and years. Uh, So I know that it can be as complicated as you want it to be, but I'm sure there are a lot of ways that you can make it easier for yourself. So what do you say when people ask you how easy it is? Uh, Like you, pretty much. um, It's as easy or as complicated as you want to make it. Um, Ten years ago, before we've made lots of strides in nutrient technology and soil um, for the cannabis plant, um, it was fairly complicated because it was – there wasn't an awful lot of resources to learn from. You talked about it very quietly and hush-hush. You weren't open about growing, um, and the products just weren't there. Um, You were going to a Home Depot or a high-end gardening store to buy your horticultural lighting. Um, Now, though, with um, the advances in technology and knowledge, um, it really is super, super easy for a grower to get started, and it's cheaper than ever before. Um, you can get a starter tent package online for three or four hundred dollars that has the majority of everything that you need. Um, we just started working with a company called a pot for pot and they give you everything that you need. Um, all that you need to supply is the seed and the sunshine. Um, so there's lots of those, um, companies that have simplified the process and then, blogs and YouTube videos like ours 
um, that walk you through step by step, show you healthy plants, show you unhealthy plants. Um, and like you mentioned before, we're working on a um, grow journal app that has a little bit of um, machine learning, so to speak, in there um, so that you can take daily or weekly pictures of your plants. And we're going to help you notice problems before they arise. Um, so we're working with the We Grow app right now to um, help improve that technology and get that to a wider market of home growers. Now, what sort of startup costs should someone expect? And I'm talking about, you know, someone like me who's never, I have a, a knowledge of how the plant works and how it grows, and I've been to a bunch of cultivations. I've never grown at home. So what sort of startup cost should someone expect? But what's the most affordable basic setup you could get to start growing for yourself? So I think if you needed a tent, um, you could probably get a decent tent with a decent light um, for $350, $400. Um, then depending on the package you get, you might have to supply some soil, uh, to keep it real simple. We're a big fan of so hum living soil, um, from Colorado. Um, they are a just add water soil. It gives your plant all the nutrients that it needs, um, throughout the life cycle of the plant. Um, just by adding water, you don't even need to pH the water. So that's balancing the, the pH levels. Um, so it's just dump water in and well preferably bottom feed but that's not important at this point in time <laughs> um uh and and then the light so the the biggest cost um and the hardest thing to overcome is the fact that plants take three to four months um maybe even longer to come to full fruition if you're starting out from a seed um and you have to endure the three to four months of electric bills and the time that it takes to get to that point. Um, but I encourage everybody to try it at least once um, because growing the cannabis plant is so incredibly rewarding. Um, I like to say that it is one of the very few things in my life that um, I'm able to get everything out of it that I've put into it. Um, so you can put a lot of love and care and attention to your plant and it's going to return all of that right back to you when you harvest it. Um, or you can ignore it and, um, don't really care for it. And, and I don't want to say hate it, but, um, not give it everything that it needs. And you're, you're going to notice that in the final quality and, and final yield returns of your plant. Um, but it's such a rewarding hobby um, that I don't know many people that start it and stick with it for more than one grow that ever want to stop doing it after that. Interesting. Now, what are some uh, mistakes? I love talking about this. Some mistakes that new growers should probably watch out for. You know, I'm sure you've made some while learning to get to where you are, but what are some of the easy, common mistakes that someone that's a new grower should be aware of? Uh, well, the first big one is giving your plants too many nutrients. Um, so um, a nutrient company's responsibility is to sell their product. Um, so their best interest is to tell you to use more of their nutrient than you may need. Um, so I would always suggest starting out with young plants at probably a quarter of what um, – the recommended dosage levels is on the nutrient bottle. Um, and honestly, I've never worked past um, like three quarters of what um, the bottle is suggesting um, to give to my plants. That is in full flower mode weeks three through five when your plant is absorbing the most nutrients and, and really like producing the most. Um, I've never gone past that three quarters of the suggested dosage level. Um, so I would suggest to growers that you start out lower and, and learn what the plant needs. Um, and, and that's the best way to, to get to know what the plant uh, is saying and doing to you um, so that you can respond and, and work through those problems in veg and then get to the point where the plant is super happy in flower. Um, the, the other big one that I like to talk about is, um, the environment is the other really key aspect, um, to growing a good cannabis plant. Um, you know, not just ensuring that you have 12 hours of light and 12 hours of true darkness, 
um, but ensuring that your temperature fluctuations aren't too great, your humidity fluctuations aren't all over the place. Um, and, and plants, I mean, we all learn in biology class and fourth or eighth or 10th grade um, that plants need three basic things to survive. Um, and, and that's light, um, CO2, and water. Um, and your responsibility as a grower is just to um, fine tune those um, inputs um, so your plant thrives in the best way possible. So don't be afraid to make mistakes and try new things um, because overall it's a weed and most times you're able to bring it back if you make a little mistake from time to time. So how did you teach yourself when you decided to start growing? Had you ever tried it before or was it your first time? Uh, the, the extent of my growing um, in the past was um, having a bunch of uh, seeds from swag back in the day. Um, and I was 19 years old and I walked out behind my parents' house and I probably, um, you know, kick planted, uh, 200 or 300 seeds. <laughs> um, and over the course of the summer, watched them all dwindle and die. And I don't think one made them all the way through, uh, to harvestable bud. Um, so when I started, it was, um, asking a lot of questions of friends that were growing, um, and doing lots of research, reading blog articles, YouTube videos, um, and like anything else, um, and this is what I suggest to growers that ask me, how do I find out how to do this? Um, you should read 10, 12, 15, 20 articles, and then when 12 of them say this, and six of them say to do it this way, and three say this way, um, Start off with the 12, and if that doesn't work for you, work your way to the next one, and then if that doesn't work, work your way to the next one. And somewhere along the way, you'll learn the uh, process or the practice that works best for you and your grow. Um, so that's pretty much what I did, is um, took in a ton of information, decided the, the direction that I wanted to go, and if it didn't work out, um, or I saw some yellowing on my leaves that I didn't know what to do, I went and read a bunch more articles and was like, okay, I think this is a nitrogen deficiency. So I'm going to try and add uh, more A and B um, to my ratio next time. And if that didn't work out, drop the A and B. So to go along with that, I would uh, also suggest that every grower track everything that they do with their plants, um, all the inputs and what your plants look like, take pictures and um, regularly track what your environment is doing um, at daytime, nighttime, when you're in there and when you're not there. Um, so with all of those and, and putting a little scientific touch to it, um, you will quickly learn, um, like I did, um, how to respond to the cannabis plan and how to spot those problems quickly. Just a couple more questions with Rob Smith, inventor and co-founder at Atlas Plant Trainer. Again, you can check them out, atlasplanttrainer.com. Uh, Rob, why is Atlas Plant Trainer a great product for someone new to the whole growing process? What's the benefit? And if you could kind of actually tell me how it works. We haven't talked about that yet. Sure, sure. So Atlas Plant Trainer is a um, click together tomato cage, essentially. Um, if you think about connects or um, an erector set for growers, our pieces connect um, in any way imaginable. Um, the vertical stake is a 360 degree locking push button rotation. Um, they insert into one another. Uh, the horizontal connectors connect at a multitude of angles, extend. And then we also uh, made the parts interchangeable with each other. So you can take the pieces apart and put them together in any number of ways to make the connection and form the, the shape of plant that you desire. Um, we also provide growers with plant clips, which are designed to replace um, soft wire ties or um, really anything else that you've used to attach your plant to those stakes before. Um, and those attach around the plant, not to the plant. Um, so um, the benefits um, for a new grower is is to start off with, we're a long-term sustainable solution. Um, so uh, bamboo stakes, um, which is the, the tried and true method, um, really should be replaced every grow. 
Um, if you think about a bamboo stake, it's hollow. So when you insert that into the soil, um, dirt and moisture will go up inside of that bamboo stake. Um, and when you take that out of the soil, you never actually get the soil out from the inside of the stake. So that moisture and dirt is just going to sit in there and fester and create mold, eventually eating its way through the bamboo stake, um, breaking down the bamboo stake, and probably getting onto your cannabis or at least into the soil of your cannabis. Um, so that's a, a, a problem to consider right off the bat. Um, but we're all, every home grower is limited by the number of plants that they can grow. Um, for example, up in Maine, um, we just ran re recreationally legal. Um, the proposed law was to grow six plants per person, 12 per household. Um, the state, when they implemented that law, cut that uh, plant count in half. So they went from six legal plants down to three per person and six per household. So if you're only growing three plants per person, um, the yield that you need to get off of those plants uh, doubles based off what you needed before. So um, Atlas Plant Trainer makes it easy for growers to grow a wider plant uh, without having to worry about the height of the plant. Um, and growing a wider plant undoubtedly equals a bigger yield because you can now take that one plant and put it underneath one light instead of having two plants underneath that one light. Um, it also maximizes the airflow to the center of the plant, so increase CO2 absorption, um, reduce chance of mold on your buds because there's more airflow throughout the canopy, um, and also uh, improve nutrient uptake. So um, when you have more plant material, more buds, there's going to be more water and more nutrients drawn up from the soil. So you're going to go through that nutrient mixture faster, providing more nutrient-rich uh, water to that plant. So that's why we say we maximize all other inputs. Um, but ultimately, we just make plant training um, and getting bigger yields off of those limited plants easier for every home grower. No, it sounds like you guys haven't had that many struggles or bottlenecks with Atlas Plant Trainer, but it's a question I love asking. Uh, have you hit any bottlenecks or snags in terms of either developing it or uh, trying to bring a product like this to market? Absolutely. I don't like to um, uh, say that it's all been an easy road by any stretch. Um, developing a product is as hard as anybody has ever told you it is. Um, you do need to go through multiple uh, prototype iterations. Um, and one of the biggest struggles for us was uh, we have two pieces, a vertical stake and a horizontal connector. Um, so we only prototyped one or two of those pieces at a time to see how they connected. Um, when we first got our our first large set together, um, <laughs> it left a lot of room to be desired. Um, there was um, – the pieces just didn't hold up well underneath the weight of all of those pieces being connected. Um, so when we thought we were about ready to go to market um, about a year ago now, um, we were – three uh, prototype iterations away from actually having a product. Um, so we didn't hit the market until April of 2018. Um, so the prototype iterations and then um, we reaching the home grower is, is a difficult thing to do. Um, you know, there's not a dedicated publication um, that captures that audience unless it's a high times. Uh, maximum Yield is working their way up there, um, but that's kind of why we have started this new project called Homegrown Journals, um, where we are looking to uh, talk and document the best home growers of cannabis um, and have them interview with us, um, all in the name of home grower education um, and trying to reach that home grower in a unique format. Um, and give them the things that they needed as they need it, um, whether that's education or products, um, you know, or a little hand-in-hand -hand guidance um, by an experienced grower. So if you want to check that out, by the way, people, atlasplanttrainer.com, a great place for these resources. Uh, last question before we get you out of here, Rob, what does the future hold for the next year for Ap Atlas Plant Trainer? And then where do you want to see it in the long run? Um, ultimately, um, we're going to continue to work um, with other brands that are focused on the home grower market um, and continue to um, expand our reach into that market. Um, on the back end, we're constantly looking to um, improve our, our cost 
um, and lower our retail price points so we can reach a larger audience. Um, long term, um, that's where we see um, Atlas Plant Trainer is we're not just a cannabis plant trainer. Um, that's why we went with a name like Atlas Plant Trainer. We wanted grandma to be happy to say that that's Atlas Plant Trainer holding up her peonies or um, around her tomatoes or holding up her peas. Um, you know, we Atlas Plant Trainer is, is perfect for any plant, um, but uh, super functional for the home cannabis gardener um, that is growing a limited number of plants inside. Um, and we're truly worth the investment where we pay for ourselves in in a fraction of um, a harvest. Um, so um, we're just looking to bring those cost points down, price points down, and reach a larger audience. That's our ultimate goal. Again, his name is Rob Smith, the inventor and co-founder of Atlas Plant Trainer. The website's linked below, so you can go ahead, scroll down, check them out. Uh, they've got a number of things to offer, a podcast, a journal app, some more stuff. Uh, you do weekly webinars as well, right, right Rob? Yep, we do weekly webinars where um, people can sign up at atlasplantrainer.com slash webinars. Um, we go over um, how the product works um, and how um, best to get the most out of your investment. And we answer questions directly from the audience. Um, we're also working on a new webinar for 2019 um, that is plant training for bigger yields, uh, which goes over... Um, all of the plant training techniques, everything we used to use in the garden, and how Atlas Plant Trainer makes that all better. So again, atlasplanttrainer.com, great information to go along with the product. So you got to check them out and keep an eye on what they're doing out in 2019. I know we will, Rob, and certainly we'll keep an eye on what you guys are doing. And uh, always say it at the end of the show, but I always mean it. You guys have some cool stuff you want to get out in 2019. Hit us up, man. If we get a chance, we'll get you back on the show. Uh, and, and we'd love to talk again, okay, man? Awesome. Thanks for having me. And before we go, Tim, um, we're going to give your audience a promo code um, for 10% off um, any products at Atlas Plant Trainer. Um, do we want to use the code ROOTED for that? Yeah, let's do it. You want to do R-O-O-T-D? R-O-O-T-D. It's in the system and ready to rock and roll when this goes live. That sounds good. And we'll put the promo code on the social posts. We'll put it in the podcast as well. So anyone that sees this and wants to try this stuff for themselves, they can head to atlasplanttrainer.com, use promo code ROOTED, get 10% and try what we've been talking about throughout this episode. Big thanks to our guest this afternoon, Rob Smith. Again, don't forget to check them out at atlasplanttrainer.com. Big thanks to our sponsor, Green Bros, one of the world's premier dry harvest solutions for also being so supportive of the show. Big thanks to the guys over at Cannabis Club TV as well because he, or they, I mean, Danny Keith, their CEO who I've worked with, have been doing a great job of helping us to push the TV platform. So don't forget to check it out at stayrooted.com, YouTube, or Cannabis club.tv that's gonna wrap it up for us here on the show this afternoon be sure to stay tuned for next week for a new podcast we'll have for you same time same channel my name is ben tim strommel reminding you to work hard be humble and stay rooted see you next week everybody